Hello everyone! In honor of Junicorn, I thought today I would do a little unicorn illustration. I am using Procreate today and working on my iPad with my Apple Pencil. I started out with the idea of a chubby unicorn, like a little Shetland pony unicorn. So what I did at first, since I did not have a pose or a concept in mind, was to just sketch some of the photos of the Shetland ponies that I liked to get a feeling for the shapes of the body and the face and get those drawing muscles warmed up. I had not drawn horses in a long while, so I really needed to refresh my memory of how to draw the face and the legs. Once I had sketched three or so, I had come up with an idea. Now, to keep myself from being influenced by any reference photos while coming up with the concept, I exited, exited Google Images and just started sketching my ideas. Or my idea. From this point on, the only time you will see me using the reference photos is so that I can just remember what specific parts of him looks like, like the hooves, the wrinkles on his neck, the mane, coloring, things like that. Number one, because I have a very bad memory, and number two, because some parts, like the hoof right here, is in a very strange pose. It's something I've never drawn before. It's at a strange angle, and yeah, it's just weird. I kind of knew what I wanted it to look like, but I could not get the leg to connect to the body to where it looked natural. So what I had to do was I had to look up specifically a sitting horse to figure out exactly how that haunch would go into the butt region. I'm so technical. <laughs> this video is actually a pretty good example of how I research for pieces and use reference photos from the internet. I'm working on a video specifically about reference photos, and I'm hoping to have that done for you soon, but first I wanted to make sure that it's a really good video and that I go into the topic thoroughly enough. I really want to be honest and informative about using reference because a lot of good artists, all the ones that I know of, uh, use reference photos, and unless you've been drawing a particular subject for a really long time and you draw it very often, it's very easy to forget parts of the anatomy and you have to look up photos to refresh your memory if nothing else. And if you're drawing something new for the first time, then you definitely need to look up some photos. Now that all my sketch layers are done, sometimes I do two, sometimes three or more, I hardly ever do less than two, I am ready to start my line work and the background. I chose to not do any line art for my background because I want it to fade into the distance and not distract the eye from the main focus, which is the unicorn. I tried for kind of a painterly style background with minimal details. It's definitely something that I need to work on and practice. It's like, why can I do the lineless art when I'm painting in acrylic, but not when I'm painting digitally? Tis a mystery. But I'm actually pretty surprised at how well this turned out. It's definitely no Studio Ghibli quality piece, but it's pretty good for me. I tried to mimic the classical paintings with the hazy background that kind of fades away into the sky. I had to fill around a lot with colors to get it just right, and that's actually a plus to working digitally rather than traditional paint, because you can just change up the colors or undo a paint stroke. It's super, super easy. Alright, now it's line art time. Nothing special here, I use the same modified 6B pencil brush that I used for the sketch because I really like that it gives a bit of texture and it's actually more forgiving than a regular line art brush. Sure, you can modify the streamline on this brush to make really smooth brush strokes, but I like leaving it on the lower end and just being okay with a divot or two in my lines where my hand shook or I sneezed. Who am I kidding? My sneezes are not that dainty. It would be much more than a divot. But I actually like leaving small imperfections in my pieces. And that's not just an excuse for missing something. I just really like the look of a piece that doesn't have perfect line art or perfect brush strokes. I used to aim for precise lines and overall perfection in my pieces, and they always looked bad because no one is perfect, and I'm farther from it than most, but when I let my lines be a little bit messy, then I feel like it looks more real and has some emotion to it. Or at least I think so. 
that's my little art philosophy for the day. And now we're on to the coloring of the unicorn. There are a few different ways that I have learned to do color fills on Procreate. One is to take the select tool and set it to freehand and draw the outline of your piece. And then once you have that selected, you drag and drop the color into the selection. But how I prefer to do it when I'm working with this pencil textured brush is to use that same brush to draw in the outline. Once you've gone all the way around, then you go into your selection tool and set it to automatic and select the outside of the outline you have just drawn. Then you invert the selection and add a new layer, then drag and drop the color into this new layer using that selection you just made. Hope that makes sense. If there are any harsh edges that are created by the selection, you can just go in and erase all on that layer before you merge the two layers together. I don't know if that's helpful at all. There may also be a better way to do this, but this is the method that I really like and maybe you'll find it helpful. At first I thought I would make him a cream color, but while scrolling through the images looking for some shading inspiration, this photo caught my eye and I really liked all the dusky warm grays, so that's what I ultimately went with. I really just played around with the colors a lot. I'm always guilty of winging it color scheme wise but I am happy that I changed my mind on his color scheme because these darker colors suit him a lot better. I wanted him to have an opal horn just to give some sparkles and brightness to the darker color palette and the scruffy demeanor. I actually meant to make him a lot scruffier, but as I went along I kind of forgot to add the scruffiness. So this is just him on a good day, or a better day than usual. I feel like his personality is kind of like Eeyore. I don't know, maybe not quite so sad. What should we name him? I'm thinking Opie because of the opal horn, but that's not super imaginative. So if you have a better name suggestion for him, let me know in the comments. I decided to give him a little flower crown just to make him look a little more cheery. But I feel like that's not really a personal fashion choice. Probably one of the other unicorns put it there. Either to cheer him up or to embarrass him. To add more depth, I made two new clipping mask layers and set them to multiply and overlay to add in the shadows and highlights. Though I will be adding in more lighting effects at the end because I can't help myself. I also tried to make up for the lack of scruffiness by adding some individual little scruffy hairs in the highlights layer. Now I'm just adding some little final details like a signature and shadows under his little horsey butt. And then the rest of this is just me playing around with the lighting. I just had fun with all these little bokeh effects. So that's pretty much it. What do you think of my Junicorn Unicorn? I was so burned out from Mermaid that I didn't want to attempt a whole nother month of illustrations, but I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to make this adorable little chubby guy. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Don't forget to leave me name suggestions for this little dude in the comments. And as always, have a great day. Bye.